Sorry. Thank you. We're, we're live. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today at RG Podcast. This is Isaiah Diesel, and I got a very interesting guest. Uh, can you introduce yourself? Uh, hello. Yes. Uh, my real name is Paul, but I go by Dawn on, online. And you're from the UK. About what part? Um, from Southeast UK. Uh, I'm a conspiracy theorist and a new age spiritualist person. Conspiracy theorist, new ages, and witch? Uh, yes. I just use the witch as a label just to sort of say I acknowledge the good, both sides of God. I acknowledge and I like to think I can draw power and come closer to myself through it. Through it. Okay, so... All right. So, which, which could, could could just mean I pray to God and I study religion and occult things, hidden things. So, occult means hidden things. And how would you describe? Um, oh, so, so, so when you say cult, have people made the association that you're in a cult because you have a cult yes. in there, or is that just yeah? Kind the, of- the 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 occult. When you say it, people actually think you're saying the cult. So I'm not in a cult. I study the occult, which means it's from Latin occultus, which means hidden. Uh, I guess it's just it's religion and hidden sciences of psychology and nature. So, okay. So I would like to focus on maybe like two things we can talk about. One, you said that God has a good side and a bad side to him. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, uh, good and bad, as in some things harm humans and the animals, and some things are good for humans and animals. Mm-hmm. So good things and, happen, bad things happen, and I think God is ultimately responsible for all of this, right. all everything that happens. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm a Christian, so that is something that's really hard to totally yeah, justify sure. and rectify. It it can cause a lot of cognitive dissonance. If you're being if you're being honest, if you're not being honest with yourself, then you'd be like, well, I could just. I'm sure in your viewpoint, maybe you'd say the bad stuff is Satan. The good stuff's God. Right. And me, I just think that's the same thing. I think that's one energy. So, okay, so in a sense, I don't know from a Christian perspective, that might be somewhat right, because we know we know, for example, that God creates Satan. So kind of one analogy I've given is that let's just say god is running like a daycare and there's some known criminals let's say even the criminals are the are his son son sons and they kind of come in they come into the kindergarten they start handing out like razor blades or poison and then some of the kids wind up hurting themselves well like yeah, the criminals are responsible, but as a as the person who's running the daycare, how do you how would you go in and then say it's the kid's fault because you've ultimately let all this stuff go down, right? Mm, I think God created the daycare center, mm-hmm. and then parts of Him did bad things in it and good things in it. So after creating it, he didn't have much choice but to let things like Satan happen, which is a part of himself bubbling over. So bad things just happen in kindergartens, in daycares. So, mind you, I, I, I'm, not say, I'm not saying very specifically that this is the case, or I know this to be true, but it might be the case, as you said, maybe there's some evil inclinations that maybe he doesn't entirely like about himself because if you're let's just say you're god and you're in eternity or whatever if he does have something that he doesn't like about himself like how does he really rectify it if you don't have like situations or circumstances to get better you know and i don't Mm. know maybe i'm thinking this is, is like a human but maybe the reason why humans are here is because he's trying to overcome this darker side of himself. Yeah, I uh, think I agree so. with that. Uh, well, who knows? I don't, I, don't wanna, know. I don't want to stick on the point that God does evil stuff too. 
It's just that I think he's done everything. Everything is him, and he's done everything. Okay. Or it, it's done everything. She's done everything. Uh, whatever. But so the bad stuff is part of it and him too. And You're but right. I don't mind splitting it into some bad God is the one that hurts children, and some good part of God is the one that saves children. I don't mind splitting it, but I think ultimately it's all one thing. So okay. I acknowledge both. So. Sure. So when when you, when you say magic, are you referring to like Harry Potter type magic? Because I know you're from the UK, so like is um, that weird. Uh, ultimately, yeah, wizards that change reality with their mind and with special powers that science doesn't understand. But an um, easier way to explain it is because the magician or witch understands psychology and the hidden laws of nature, they can predict certain things. So when they put an intention out, it actually bubbles through the Holy Spirit or the you know the divine part of nature that, that's everywhere and has an effect. But just because they understand more about how things can change. So, okay. So whenever you say magic, now are you saying, now whenever you talk about changing things, is it, is it just solely with the mind or is it or is it also doing things like alchemy and uh yeah i'm not know. sure i don't think it can be just the mind but i do believe it also actually i do i don't think i can lift levitate just by wanting to i don't think anyone can levitate so it's not that type of magical physical powers so, uh, but, and I, th I think most of what i believe about magic is that i can affect reality by doing things actual actions but i also believe there's a tiny bit of it where it, the same as praying in a christian sense mm -hmm. the universe I, and god hears you when you put intention out through a candle when you're praying and that's the same for magic okay so it's, I like, have, it's like praying yeah so i have seen magic on one time in my life um and not david copperfield but it was whenever i saw my daughter on a screen for her first time and she was just like this blob of blue i don't know whatever but that's about the closest i've ever gotten to magic but um is there a light side of magic and a dark side of magic as well because i heard there's both yeah i think if you're in well uh in the satanic bible they call it love a love ritual or a destruction ritual so it's compassion or destruction. If you're doing something to hurt someone or harm someone or rectify a problem that needs balancing, but someone might get hurt in the process, that would be right. black magic or gray magic. And then white magic is healing your friend okay. through, white, white through prayer. Okay. Or maybe you could, you could argue that hexing the Taliban is white magic. If, if, you, if we agree the Taliban's bad, then hexing them is white magic okay all right so so do you go to like some kind of a cultist church or group or graveyards or something like that with other people? no I, I would love to you just so far I, I wear a pentagram under my clothes as a necklace and I'm, i've got candles and i read crowley books and i pray to lucifer and isis as like as a psychodrama to see if it's real and see how i feel about it just like someone would pray to Jesus or Mary, whatever. I, I don't get why you, but I don't, I'm not in a group or coven yet. I would like to start one, but I don't know if I've got enough energy in life to do it. So is this something you're doing like in your weekends or like at night time or something yeah, like that? Like you before have bed, I, before you have, bed is meditation and prayer and relaxing with a bath, but generally have, every action and during the day what however you present yourself and what you do is all part of spirituality i think interesting that's an interesting way to look at it okay so all right so just let me see if i can get this uh correct it is it is possible to influence the spiritual or the physical world by physical means um somewhat equivalent to prayer but is there some kind of potions or some kind of like fairy dust you could do that would cause something to get done like 
like instantly. Um, no, I don't think there's an instant fix. There is obviously shamans with dust that can put stuff in your face and then you're a zombie and they can tell you to do stuff like weird shamanic witchcraft potions and stuff. But I don't think there's any special elixir. Maybe there is. That's what alchemy is. It's the hidden study of elix elixirs. So maybe, I don't know. Yeah, that's so, the answer. So you're talking about the stuff that happens like in Haiti, for example? Yeah, voodoo stuff. Yeah. Some of that stuff is closer to what Harry Potter stuff. I actually spent a couple of months in Haiti after the earthquake. And so I got to learn a little bit about voodoo. And well, I mean, needless to say, Hollywood hypes up a lot of things. Yeah. Whenever you see it in a movie, they're like poking dolls or whatever. But yeah, it's actually interesting that I I had someone down there explain to me what they did with the dolls back in the day. Is that let's say like a slave master had beat it, beat a slave. What the person okay, so the, the person what they would do is they would leave like a, a, a doll on the door and that would like signal the house servants to like poison maybe like poison the master so yeah the master kind of saw the doll there and kind of put two and two together that yes yeah, the visualization of a creepy doll right helps helps make the magic stronger but i think maybe just a weird voodoo priest in a room on his own selling a doll maybe that echoes out into the village and the person who the doll is supposed to be eventually feels it somehow through nature interacting through all the different micro and macro stages interesting and so, okay so can i ask you how long you've been into this uh, occultism or being a witch mm. uh, about two years three years uh, i was atheist for ages i changed my life gave up some drugs and became a better person grew up as a man and conspiracy and wanting more truth led me to wanting to be spiritual but not wanting to just go straight towards Christianity or another religion. I see. I see. So I was actually an atheist for a year, did the drugs, did the women, did the drinking, all that. And I know I've been a believer now for seven years. It's been a yeah. long journey. I've had plenty of times where I've messed up and gone back to my old lifestyle. But I think just continually going forward and trying to be a better person and trying to discover things about yourself. I think yes. that's really helpful. Uh, I think okay. That is a big part of spirituality. Right. growing as a person so 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 you definitely believe in that we have an actual spirit something like in a material part of your body that would live on after you die yeah i think so yeah yeah, yeah. and so so do you believe in in do you believe like in a literal heaven heaven and hell or do you think oh that's yeah kind of I, I think i'm closer to reincarnation idea so you come back, you repeat struggles, you grow more and more, and maybe there's some type of release where you ascend past material. So it would be a type of heaven eventually, maybe. Uh, like Nirvana? Yeah, peace, rest, no more physical struggles, weak bodies. So probably about four months before I became a believer, I was in Israel, and I actually got a phoenix being like born in on itself it's, oh, yeah. so it's basically it's like cracking from an egg it's going around it's dying and then it it dies and then like it kind of just smokes away and then it just it repeats the cycle oh, on, on my leg. ashes yeah so th that was done to represent like reincarnation i mean i will say this i will grant some this. type of rebirth right well so so in a way i mean you could say that about being a christian because that is a central theme inside of Christianity that you get reborn, that you're yes. born again. So I know actually that is quite occult to me, the bap or maybe not baptism, but being reborn under your belief in God. So, so I might do say uh, self dedication as a witch to say I'm here and I'm ready to serve for the good, for freedom. So okay. So, so you, you have birth myself kind of thing. So you have a benevolent and if you're talking about freedom and you're talking about, you want to help people, there's something positive that you're trying to do with this, correct? 
yes so it's kind of weird because even though i like the archetype of lucifer and some old pagan mother goddesses i actually want to stop tyranny and ruling people ruling the people beneath them can you uh can you quickly just tell me what are the top three conspiracy theories that you that you're interested in or that you follow oh yeah uh i i'll take it right to the top so jesuits catholics freemasons illuminati communism all of these high priest class from ancient bloodlines all meeting in basements and deciding how to rule humanity like it's a farm that would be the top one so so you're saying they're all working together like all these different yeah i think they have fallouts and backwards and forwards but i think generally they must handshake on some things so and then i guess i would say COVID 19 is is a pandemic that would be another one pandemic and so would would you would you believe in the build burger uh build yeah Bilderberg. all that stuff okay so i mean for, first of all i do want to say something uh i don't want to get on there if they do exist i don't want to get on their bad list but that right. kind of conspiracy theory stuff it's not nearly as far-fetched as people might think okay no. The, the thought that there are people in the background and they're trying to manipulate uh, one example would be through prices of oil or food or things like that. That can cause some serious yeah. economic instability if you're messing around with uh, inflation and you know what I mean? Like a monetary yeah, yeah. policy. Because if but you you'd, take- you'd say maybe I'm right, maybe there is some evil people that make handshakes and try and control humanity like a farm. Well, there's evil people out there. So there's people who yeah. want to get control. There's people who... somehow I think somehow they've had power and they've kept power. And I think that's through the occult. They know stuff we don't and they hide it from us. So we never learn. And then over generations, we completely forget there was even a knowing to be had. So okay so that's a good point um what is another conspiracy theory that you think is maybe um it has to do with the same kind of thing like either covering something up or um, yeah i guess uh not just the moon landing but i think freemasons run nasa and i think they exaggerate how far they can travel and what they can do in space (laughs) <laughs> so so this could be a, this is actually a prime example of talking about manipulating stuff okay because you had the cold war going on and the united states was in a not only an arms race but also in like a cultural and yeah technological battle race with uh, the soviet union right i would say so, um in a race to become the metaphorical angels that can ascend to and back from heaven. Okay, so the Soviets got there first. Okay, the Soviets got there first. Then we said we're going to take this up to another level. Now, I'm not going to say that the moon landing didn't happen. I'm not going to. I'm not going to go down that because I have heard experts say that it's not even possible right now. Mm. E- even like 50 years after. 50 60 years after they said we landed that it's not even possible for us to go there right now right they've lost the so, technology and they can't if, navigate if, the radiation belts the same as right, they did right. or something, something like that something to that effect they said if anybody goes there it's going to be a one-way trip because there's no way you're going to live uh past yeah. that so, so anyway not just the details of the moon but in general i think they might have fibbed to us about their abilities in heaven in space right so so th- the point I was trying to say with that is that's part of a overall scheme that the United States was doing, which which actually eventually worked, which was to collapse the Soviet Union. Ironically, right now, uh, with Af- everything that's going on in Afghanistan, that actually played one of the most crucial ro- roles in, in bringing down the Soviet Union because we tied them up for 20 years there. They had to do that. They're putting money into their nuclear 
And so eventually it just got too much and then they wind up collapsing. So, but the moon land, right. let's, let's just assume for a second that the moon landing was fake. It's one of those things you do to, uh, if you ever read the art of war, it talks in there very brilliantly. Like you, oh, have, to yeah. you have to bluff your hands. You, whenever you're strong, you have to present yourself as weak. And whenever you weak, you're weak, you have to present yes. yourself as strong. So it's like, it talks about the psychology of war. And right, a cultural, in, constant cultural war. Yeah. So, so this, like this stuff is not beyond, it's not like, okay. If you were to say something like Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster were like friends or something like that. And you, you just know, make I could it give up, you so a deeper one, you know, maybe the ancient aliens is theory is half true. Maybe some of these bloodlines that started the Illuminati and the Jesuits and the Freemasons had reptile giant archon, you know, Anunnaki ancestors. Okay. So I don't know if that's so, true, but I'm th I think about these things maybe. Well, so I want to bring this back to the Bible a little bit because in Genesis six, it talks about the, the angels coming down and having sex with the, the right. woman and creating like a, um, an alternate breed of, of humans. And I don't know, you could yeah. call those the Anunnaki if you want. It's not just the uh, Bible. No, it's in a lot of stories. Yeah. So it, like, again, even as a Christian, it's not incredibly a big stretch of imagination to think <laughs> some of this stuff. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not someone who's like, okay, Tommy, conspiracy theory, and I'm just going to believe it. Like, but maybe that's but, how they got, had their power and kept their power because they, they're related to the, the other things. Sure. I mean, Maybe. It, it, it could completely fit inside of the biblical model that yeah. there is this other race of, of angels and demons, and they're somehow interacting with the earth. Sometimes they show themselves, sometimes they don't. Some and, people take it all the way to the serpent bloodline and Adam's bloodline or whatever, the two draconian bloodline and Adam's bloodline. That's the good and evil fight. I don't know if I believe all that. I'm saying... I believe humans might have been created by another being mm -hmm. and maybe th that implies powerful ancestry. So I want to tell you one last conspiracy theory before you go. Okay. And this is interesting because it does have to do with Christianity and it does have to do with communism. But are you aware of the fact that Jim Jones was an atheist? Oh, no, I've heard loads of stories about him not being who he says he was, but I don't know about oh, the atheism. He was saying he was like a reincarnation of Jesus, but yeah, right. Yeah, the same kind of, okay, so the same kind of concept. Any chance you've ever seen um, the outer so he limits? was Like he was CIA, he doesn't believe in God, maybe he's a Luciferian, but he's pretending to be reincarnated jesus to see how far he can take 900 people absolutely yeah and then the, yeah. and then wow. the, the cia definitely got involved with that i will tell you that the cia um that's just a fact because you can actually hear the death the death recording of like the people gargling yeah. and um you can hear it and at one point jim jones literally says like he goes what is that guy doing here and um he calls him his name's like dryer or something he's like Get that guy out of here. Take him back down to the village. And it turns out the guy that he was talking about was a was a CIA operative. Oh, so right. I mean, I, I've spent a lot of time researching that. But that's you, fascinating to me. Um, the the evil people through their special means using cults to test humanity in different ways. So like Heaven's Gate, you know, they made thirty nine people think that they were ascending to Haley's Bop Comet. Mm -hmm. just escape earth and made them commit suicide right well yeah and charles manson those murders probably cia witches against witches and polanski's wife he's he, they did something wrong so i don't know start a race war this is all cia type stuff yeah you know what um so, so so interesting, interesting. I, I, I will, we will close off on this because you've heard of the whole MK Ultra experiments that they were doing yeah. as far as mind control. 
Well, that actually started and because of the fact that uh, it's actually had its roots, roots in the Korean War. Because what, what happened is some of the United States soldiers came back as POWs and they actually wanted to go back to North Korea. And it was like a weird thing because even after getting back to the United States, even after like de decompressing them, like uh, yeah, that is weird. Yeah, so so they were trying to figure out what they were, how they were able to do this. And I've been in North Korea actually a couple of times. I've been there twice, and one thing that I've seen is that they are absolute experts at propaganda and manipulation. Okay, I mean, positive oh, yeah, sure. experts. So. Well, of course, they're learning from Russia and China. Almost, perfect, almost perfection. Pretty close. Yeah. Actually, you know what? Probably close to perfection because yeah. if you take a look at all of the other communists, uh, they've either fell or they have not been able to successfully pass power. And now yeah. they've done it three generations. Like Netflix has recently released a series about dictators and there's like they do like six they do like yeah Didi Amin, saddam hussein um i watched the first two i think already okay so the, i think they did uh momar Gaddafi, but the last one that they did was kim il-sung they said that these are the only people who have done this successfully for generations so there's something to i mean obviously it's very twisted what they're doing but there's something yeah, it's to horrible be, there's something to be said for the efficiency in which they're doing it right yeah anyway um, i actually believe that the, the, this cabal I talk about does this worldwide through media, yeah, and move and movies, and that is full MK Ultra, which counts as sorcery. Yeah, I think you could say that. And so what wound up happening was the United States, the CIA, they said like, how can we reverse engineer this? Okay, so one of the things that they were doing was they started off with like sleep deprivation. Okay. So this is one of the things that they do in North Korea. They put you in extremely stressful situations. For example, like they tie your hand behind your back and they put you against a wall. They have like these little chains, right? And so you get cuffed into there. And the thing is from that position, it's called a stress position. And I've actually interviewed North yeah. Koreans who have been tortured like this. Uh, but what they do is that in this position, you're you can't really like you ever been in a plane and like you just cannot really get comfortable in any position right like yeah. a really small plane it's essentially the same thing and so they're depriving people of sleep and then just plain repetitive uh messages to them you know to dissident dissidents to the government yeah so God, yeah. I, I, actually we got a north korean refugee coming onto the podcast here pretty soon so uh, that being said, I want to say, is there any stereotypes that you think that people might have against you that uh, maybe are inaccurate? Oh, I just got called alt-right, even though I voted left my whole life until I gave up voting. Mm. So being anti-government, I think people might think I'm alt-right, but I don't even like poli any politics. I think that's all just methods of control. Uh, maybe they would think I'm evil because I've chosen other archetypes instead of the father and Jesus, which isn't true. But like, what do you actually believe Maybe about? I'm gullible because I'm a conspiracy theorist. I'm gullible, they might think. What do you actually believe about Jesus then? Oh, oh yeah, that's, a, that's another whole show. I think there was a man, uh, he, he ended up being called Yeshua by the people afterwards or around that time. And he was a cult leader and he, he knew the occult and natural law. He was an anarchist and he was quite a radical. And then he got pedestalized by the Roman church. So he's the only son of God, no more. And then the Romans wrote lots of weird stuff about him. Hmm. <laughs> That's but well, he is still, he still stands up as a light worker, like Buddha. Buddha. He has definitely changed my life. I will tell you that. I was yeah. not a believer. I was an atheist. And he actually spoke to me in my room about seven years ago, almost exactly seven years ago. And one thing, 
I've experienced is you'd probably call it magic. Mm. Other people have called it magic, but I have positively experienced miracles, like things getting materialized in front of me. And I will yeah. tell you this, what I have experienced, and, and I'm sure, you know, ironically, I think you would believe me over someone else. Uh, another, if, uh, hold if on, hold it on. wasn't, sorry, hold on, let, let, let me tell you this point. You would probably believe this over even Christians. Some, some Christians don't believe this fact that I'm going to tell you, but mm. I've actually experienced that dark side, the dark forces, whatever you might call it, whatever entities are out there. I've experienced that side of, so I was someone who was so skeptical about any of that kind of stuff. And then I had an experience and I'm like, oh, this is not even up for debate anymore. Yeah, that's good. So you can confirm there's stuff out there. And oh, Jesus exists life. and dark entities exist. I would bet my life. I would bet my soul. I would bet. I would bet every last thing. I would bet the lives of every person I know that this stuff is, is real. I can't even believe that people don't believe in this stuff anymore. Honestly, after experiencing mm. it myself, they have this expression that says the greatest trick that Satan ever pulled was to get people not to believe in him. The yeah. fact that people don't believe that there's dark forces or there's people manipulating stuff in the, in the background, right. like you do, I think that I is think that's the occult. Insane. So it's been hidden from us. Mm -hmm. um, a weird thing I would add is if you see Lucifer as a light worker too, just a weird story about a fallen angel who said no to the judgmental father with too many rules and now he comes down to give the apple and knowledge to the people because he doesn't want them to be slaves so he gives them knowledge gnosis through an apple as a serpent to me he's also sort of my jesus character it's just another man who came to help us with knowing ourselves well if, if in that if, way so it works for me as the same in the same way so if if we're going to get pedantic then he's he's good actually he's actually good because he's actually serving god's purpose like for example had he no, not i wouldn't say he's good but well, i think i, I let, relate let me, to the good qualities let me finish because if you have adam and eve in the garden of eden forever and they never eat anything then there's never a need for salvation there's never a need for the cross jesus just stays up in heaven forever and right, even yeah, like even e even entering into Judas and causing Judas to betray Jesus, he ultimately was like, pardon the expression, he was like the nail in the coffin to like seal Jesus's fate. And yet that's how we got our salvation. So he ultimately has served a good purpose. So, but that being said, uh, I really I like wanted, that argument. Yeah, I really mm -hmm. want to thank you. This is one of the most interesting conversations we've had. Uh, very interesting. Ah, cheers. I think I would definitely have to have another conversation with you because there's more yeah, questions that we would have. So I really want to thank you for your time and uh, for the listeners out there. Don't forget to subscribe and like this and tell us what you think about this one. This is a bit of an odd conversation. Oh, by the way, did you get to hear my talks about uh, uh, what I was talking about at uh, Jim Jones? Uh, no, I'll, I can have a look for them though. Okay. So, yeah, well, I was having this conversation earlier, but so, yeah, give us a like and look us up on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitter. We're pretty much on everything, Spotify, and drop us an email or like uh, and a comment below. Ask, tell us if there's another topic that you'd like to see us discuss, or if you'd like to come on as a, as a, as a guest. We're always looking for a new podcast guest. So thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you back again. Bye. Hey, Don. Right, man, that was cool. Yeah.